Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Microsoft Project Made Easy. Today we're going to be looking at tracking and some of the problems that people have been asking me questions on the channel about with regards to updating and tracking your project. So these are a few of the specific problems I'm trying to answer the questions. But in the process, I think I can also go back over the updating uh, process and make sure that everybody's okay with that at the same time. Some little things that you might forget. So the first thing I'm going to say is that you have to make sure that you've set the baseline. Uh, if you haven't set the baseline, then you can't track anything because you can't compare it to anything. So that's one of the most fundamentally important things. And I find people forget to set the baseline and I get comments like, I'm trying to update it, but I can't, it doesn't show me a variance. Why doesn't it show me a variance? Well, you hadn't set the baseline. So that would be one of the first uh, issues. And usually what I do with that is I usually will go into the variance table and um, in this case, I do have a baseline here, so I've already set a baseline. But if I didn't have a baseline, what would it look like? I would go to the project tab, right? And I would go to where it says set baseline. I could go clear baseline. So if I accidentally set it too soon, I could clear it. I could say clear it for that date, clear entire project. And now this is sort of the default position until you set a baseline. Right, so if I want to now set a baseline, it's cleared. I've got no variances on anything. I'm going to go set baseline, follow the default entire project. And this is under the project tab. Click OK. And of course, it's just copying the start dates, pasting them there, copying the finish dates and pasting them there. Uh, you haven't made any updates yet, so nothing's changed. So there's no variances on your project as of yet. All right, so the next thing I would suggest is you need to have a date that you're going to update the project to. And so we want to put a status date. So under the project tab again, you go to where it says status date and you pick a date. So in this case, I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to pick uh, August and maybe we'll say uh, August 13th, 2021. All right, go back in time a little bit and click OK. And then I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to select grid lines and I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to select status date, solid line and show it to me in red. And I'm going to click OK. And it's picked August 13, 2022 for some reason. Hmm. So let's pick that again. Yeah. Went to 2022. I could have swore it said 2021. And that might be one of the things that I would like to illustrate is that sometimes Microsoft Project gets a little bit buggy and it does those things. So there we go again and it's still not changing it. All right. So if that happens, then I'm going to go to the Project tab and I'm going to go where it says Project Information. And I'm going to put a status date here. So let's try here and see if it lets me do August 13th, 2021. All right, August 13th, 2021. I'm going to click OK, and there it goes. So there you see, Microsoft Project can be buggy sometimes. And sometimes it does do those things. So it's good to have workarounds and it's good to try things a little bit differently. I'm actually glad that that did that while I was recording it because it does show sometimes these things can be very frustrating to individuals when they happen. Sometimes closing the file, opening it again solves the problem. Sometimes you have to find a workaround. That's the nice thing. Usually you can do the same thing three or four different ways in Microsoft Project. So it didn't work under the project tab here. But it did work when I went to project information and I went to the status date over here. So it took me a minute or two to figure it out, but it comes. Uh, so sometimes when you find that, just try to look at it, calm yourself and say, can I do this a little bit different way? Is there another avenue around this? And generally you can. Uh, so it doesn't happen that often, but I'm that's one of the reasons why I want to do these problems and, and uh, questions videos, because sometimes it's not even really your fault. Sometimes it's just acting a little bit um, funny. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do, now we got a status date, so we want to update some activities to this, this area. 
To update the activities, we go to what screen? The tracking screen. So I'm going to click on the square icon box up here and I'm going to right click and go to tracking. I find that's the fastest way to switch screens. And so I wanted to point out something too that it kind of acts a little funny when you do this too. So normally we put in an actual start and an actual finish date for our activities. So I'm going to do that right here. Uh, so in this particular case, um, this is supposed to start January, um, June 21st. So let's go there. Uh, so I'm going to go June back a couple of months, uh, June 21st, right? So I'm going to say the actual start is then that's fine. Now I could put the actual finish date. So, you know, if it was sooner, I could put that. If it was later, I could put that. Uh, so if I go, Let's see. So we've got uh, June 21st and it looks like it's supposed to finish on, I think, the 19th of uh, June. So I'll go over here. Actually, it's the um, it's going to be July. Sorry, it's going to it's a long activity. It's going to be all the way to July uh, 19th. Right. So if I put here, it should show that filled with a solid line and complete. OK. I'm going to click undo, undo now. Um, very often what I like to do when I'm doing updates is I like to insert the duration column. So I just click on a column. You could insert it anywhere you want. Insert column. Type D for duration. Okay, type D for duration. And that that's my durations that I have, right? So I know that that's 20 days. I could say it takes longer if it took longer one day and that would put that in. Uh, you know, it wouldn't say it's done. It would make it, it would extend it, right? So I could extend it while I'm in this screen pretty quickly. If, for example, the act, I know the actual duration now because it's done and it's 20 days, I could just type 20 here and it'll fill in this date and it'll put the solid line in there. So that's another way of uh, entering that. Um, or I could put, 19 days, right? So I could put 19 days and enter and it should shorten that a little bit here. Now see here, it shortened the actual duration, but it thinks that you're not completed it, right? So actual duration here, it's not showing it finished because it's just thinking you've only done 19 of the 20 days. You didn't change what the duration is. This is showing you what you've actually done so far. It's not going to show it's complete unless it matches that complete. So that's why it shows remaining duration one day. So that might not be what you're after in this particular case. You know, you could be after that and that nev nothing else got done in this period because now don't forget this status date means you're updating to this period. So if that happened, then maybe you got to split this task and move it all the way out here. And that's going to move these other activities as well. But maybe you don't want to do that. So I'm just going to click undo here. All right. And I'm going to click it back so that it's just not done. But I've got that actual start date in there. The other thing, of course, I could do when I'm updating, I could just say it's 100% done. That's pretty quick to do, right? So I could just go boom, 100% done. And I wouldn't even have had to have an actual start date to do that. I could have just said 100% done. So different ways around working with that. But I want you to remember actual duration is how many days of this length you've done. Sure, it will show it's 100% done when the actual duration and the duration show the same time period. So that's a, another area I've been getting some question, questions on. The other one is this is a little bit perplexing, uh, I find, uh, with a project. When you put in an actual start here, like say we finished this a few days early. This was one of the questions I had from uh, one of the viewers as well. So if you finish this a few days early, it was I think on this point or some point close to it on uh, my updating uh, my updating an MS project uh, file. So if I move that, so what do we got? That's July 25th. So let's say um, we go back to July and the 25th. Fifth, so we're going to say, uh, maybe we're going to say the 29th. That should show it. All right. So if I go 29th, watch what happens. It's going to ask me cancel, avoid. 
uh, scheduling conflict, uh, continue allow scheduling conflict. Like it's not letting me um, do that, right? So I could go continue and allow scheduling conflict. So let's see. Um, it pulled it back. Actually, it did it pretty well that time. Sometimes it doesn't always do it that well. Let's try it on maybe this one here and we'll put uh, actual start back here and we'll try it on this one as well. So we've got July 28th. Let's try the 28th. See how it did that there? See how it did it differently? It just pulled it back and it's like, well, why on the other one did it not? And why on this one did it? And then you can rack your brain for hours on that and make yourself a little bit uh, dizzy with it. What I would suggest, click undo. Again, it's always nice if you have little workarounds, if it starts to get a little bit quirky on you sometimes, uh, that's helpful. So I could uh, double click on the activity and I could go to predecessors and I could say put a negative lag of, I think it would have been um, two days or three days. I think I used three days, so I'll do three days. And two days would do the same if I'm off with it. See how it pulled it back? And now I could say 100% done, problem solved, right? Uh, so that's another way of working around. Of course, I could change the duration on it and I could make it longer and then it will I could say 100% done I could do a bunch of different things if I wanted to with that so those choices are kind of um, up to me what I want to do with that but there's a workaround so what I did was I put the negative lag because otherwise it was leaving that dashed line like it was broken uh, and not pulling the activity back but I wanted it to be pulled back because this is what's actually been happening and so I want it to show from this day. I don't want it to show a broken line and then start counting the duration from there. So if you get that happening, that would be my suggestion is to just put a negative lag on it and then update it that it's 100% complete if that's the case. Or in this case, I don't want to say it's 100% complete because you see how that's another problem. It went past the, tra past the status date. Well, I only want it up to the status date. Well, you could calculate the actual duration, right? You could say, all right, that's not 100% complete. You could uh, say actual duration is, what's that? Five, 10, 12 days looks like. So I could put in there 12 days if I wanted to, and that will update it to the status date. That's one way to do it. Uh, the other way, I'll just click on undo. If I was satisfied with these activities, now that I've moved it around and all of these activities are complete now up to the status date, there's nothing fancy going on. Well, maybe I'll show you one more little trick before I do that. But what I can do if they are where I want them to be, I could quite simply, just to show you quickly now, is I could select everything. That's what my favorite. I'll select everything and then I'll go mark on track and I'll just click mark on track and it will update everything to the left of the status date. So let's try that, mark on track, and it updates everything to the left of the status date. It won't update anything to the right. That's the other reason it's a great tool to put in the status date. It, you can use that tool, mark on track, once you've got everything set the way that you want it to be. The other thing that I could do, I'll click undo, that I was gonna say is, Let's say that this activity, um, drywall first side, didn't start. It didn't start, so I should move it. So I can move that activity, and I can just say incomplete parts to the status date. Again, because I uh, did that, I can move that, those incomplete parts to the status date, right? So what that will do is it'll move that, and it'll move it past there, right past it. The other thing I could have done was move it as many days as I wanted just by going custom if I want it to be a few days longer than that. But I want it there, so that's okay. Then I could hit um, the uh, select all and mark on track. Another problem that I get into, I, I see that people have sometimes, maybe I can do go a little bit past the status state with this just to show you some of this kind of problem that happens. Um, you get this activity, you mark it 100% complete, right? Well, that's going to put a constraint. That's why the critical path disappeared. And a constraint 
you can see the constraints in the indicator column. If you go to entry, in the indicator column, you can see um, these little boxes, right? Um, so that's showing you a constraint. I've marked this one as complete. If I just actually, sorry, it wouldn't have marked it as um, uh, a constraint. It marked it as complete here. A constraint shows as a box. Constraints are problems onto their own, and I'll say that for another video. This checkoff says that that's done. All right, so now I will update this, say, to five days. Watch what happens. It pushes this out and this stays still and then people get frustrated why isn't aren't things moving well you mark this as complete once you mark it as complete it's not going to move anymore because you said it starts on this date and finishes on that date other things will move around it but it won't move so if you want it to move you need to zero it out and then it will move right and so that's something to be cognizant of too if you're having that issue when you update um, your file. Some people are probably wondering, what's that line? That's today's date. So that's why I was going back a little bit in time. This is the status date. Okay, so that was the, the main little uh, questions that I wanted to update. There's a lot of other things that'll come up in the updating process, and I'm sure I'll do um, more uh, videos on this. But if you look on my YouTube channel, I've got step-by-step -step from square one, how you start Microsoft Project, how you add resources, and how you update and recover, how you save uh, the file naming protocols for the updating process, and you can check those out on my playlist. So I hope this helped you for some of the problems and little issues, and I hope the person that asked me the question is watching this video too, uh, so it helps them. So I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day. And by the way, if you've got your own questions on Microsoft Project, it gives me ideas for videos on the YouTube channel because if you're having problems, I guarantee you other people are having the same problems, including myself sometimes. As I said, sometimes it's a little bit tricky and you have to come up with workarounds. So let's help each other as we build this community. I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.